Well, it's an interesting question to start with when, when, when someone says, where did the Industrial Revolution, Revolution come from? And it, it's mainly, what is an Industrial Revolution? Because for a very long time, uh, people assumed that it was this great climactic moment and almost you woke up on New Year's Day in 1850 and there it was all around you, factories and trains and whatnot. Um, and then a great new period of, of historical scholarship in other countries started to say, well, in actual fact, if we look back in time before that, we'll see all sorts of indications that uh, the, the, the beginnings were happening and then also that some very uh, antiquated things continued on past it, so maybe there was no revolution at all. I continue to use the term because I think it gets to a, a point, there gets to be a point in the evolution of uh, industrial society, an industrializing society, where things are really dramatically different than they used to be. And there was a Hamilton politician and businessman, a guy named uh, Buchanan, who in 1872 said, we're passing through an industrial revolution. So it meant something to people in Canada in the 1870s. And I think what I, what I want people to think about when we use that term is not simply the factories and the machines and the steam engines and all those things that are usually associated with it. That's very important. The industrial revolution meant new technology, new power sources, no question. But it more importantly meant new social organization. That work had previously been done in workshops, in people's homes. Uh, there wasn't much concentration of work. There were a few places in, in pre-industrial society where you'd find uh, workers gathered together maybe to build ships or to make iron or some, something along those lines. But basically the social organization of work was very decentralized and largely in family groups. But what the Industrial Revolution does is bring people together. Employers have decided there are investment opportunities, there are poss profit-making possibilities. And so they start to gather people together under the same roof to work for them and to reorganize the way in which work is done to get the most work out of them. So in that process, they use technology where they can, but generally I try and get people to think that in fact it's the social organization of that that's way more important, especially in the first Industrial Revolution, which is roughly from 1840 to 1890, uh, when machinery is there and in some industries, but in, case, in many cases not at all. Uh, historians like to call this combined and uneven development, where some industries have moved a long way and others are still lagging way behind. But in actual fact, com the combination of those has created a new kind of industrial environment, a new kind of economy. And it's new largely because of the way in which it's organized, so that you find considerable numbers of workers who used to work on their own in their own craft shops, now working under the roof of, a, of one employer, doing similar things to what they did before with similar tools, but he's, run, he's calling the shots. He's paying them a wage to do that work as opposed to their, own, their old patterns of being on their own. And along with that, of course, comes a social organization of labor that gets quite controversial because women are drawn into some of those jobs in ways that are quite um, unexpected uh, in the sense that they're, they're doing some heavy industrial labor that um, isn't the sort of work that in polite society they would think women should be doing. But even more controversial, of course, is that kids are drawn in. Children become uh, part of the industrial process in a number of locations, uh, in, in mines, in some uh, factories like textile factories, in places where they need light labor to move things around because there are no conveyor belts in the first industrial revolution. Everything's lifted and carried around. So kids are used that way. They're used as messengers to run through the streets because they don't have telephones yet. So there are a whole variety of ways in which juvenile labor is really important to that first phase. And so by 1890, we've got a different kind of world, um, a different kind of organization of industry. We've got lots of, lots of uh, older industries that are still organized, and newer ones that are still organized on a small scale basis. But we've got a, a big factory like the one that makes agricultural implements in Toronto. Uh, the Massey fa factory, which is the biggest in the British Empire. We've got huge cotton mills in Montreal. We've got quite substantial lumber mills that are operating in many parts of the country that are only seasonal, but are really big and, and technologically important, uh, technologically advanced uh, for their time. And on and on, a number of, of quite substantial changes. And, and people began to think about this as a different kind of world. They used industrial more often to describe their society.